Hey y'all, hi. So, as many of you know, I am going into 2023 trying to buy a little less and spend a little less. And if you're curious about the background information for that philosophy, how I decided that I need to do this in 2023, then go back and watch my video that I posted right at the beginning of the year. I think it's called Another No Buy Year because I initially thought I might do another no buy year. And then I just decided to try to spend the year in a state of reluctance to buy buy new stuff rather than a state of eagerness to buy new stuff. So my shopping guideline for myself for the year is simply thoughtfulness. And I'm trying to default to having the answer to should I buy this always be no. This video is going to be a check-in of sorts about how it's going. We're only partway through January, but there have already been a number of times when I really wanted to buy something. I felt the automatic no enforce itself because of my philosophy for 2023. And then in some some of these cases, I took specific action to kind of talk myself down off the ledge, make myself see the logic of not buying the thing and return to a place of full comfort with not buying the thing. And it's those occasions that I'm going to discuss today. If this is your first time to my channel, then welcome. I'm so glad you're here. My name is Hannah. I really love beautiful things. And so on this channel, I do some reviews of makeup. I make some fashion videos, but I also discuss the sticky side of being a lover of beautiful things things, which is negotiating the contemporary landscape of what's on offer. There's so much more beautiful stuff out there that I would love to own than I have room for and then I can afford to buy. And sometimes they make videos talking about how I'm handling that. And this is one of those videos. So if that sounds good, if that sounds relatable to you, I hope you will subscribe. And now let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. So the first recent struggle that I'm going to discuss today is ridiculously, dementedly, the desire to buy more knitwear. And you know, I genuinely love knitwear and I've gotten to a place where I'm okay with having a rather robust collection of it because I do wear all of my knits. Every single one that I own, I relish and I wear them all. I get a lot of good use out of them. So I'm not over here feeling bad about the number of sweaters that I own. However, clearly, patently, one of the things that I overpurchased in 2022 is sweaters and specifically Baba sweaters. I'm really into this brand, Baba. They make beautiful wear forever knitwear, which is part of why I'm so sucked in. I love the idea of a sweater that's truly designed to last forever. And they really are. And I really believe that the ones that I own are going to last forever. That's the kind of wardrobe I want to be building. That's the kind of business that I want to be supporting. But it got a little out of hand last year once I realized what a truly great investment it felt like for me and how much I truly love and wear the ones that I have. I kind of let myself go a little farther down the path of collecting knitwear from this brand than I feel like I would have liked to in retrospect. And I rounded out the year of 2023 by buying two more pieces from Baba in their winter sale. This is one of them. Again, I'm not sorry I bought it. I have relished wearing it the several times that I've worn it already in the year, but because I love it so much, and I, this is a different silhouette than any of the others that I've gotten. It's got these really interesting kind of tuck sleeves that balloon out and, you know, clearly this almost absurdly dramatic collar. But if there's one thing I love in this life, it's a dramatic collar. So the third or fourth time that I put on this sweater, I thought what I often think when I really like something that I've bought, which is this. I should get this in another color. I should get another one of these. I love it so much. I should get another one. In the case of this sweater, I was like, I should get the cream colored one. I don't have any white sweaters or cream colored sweaters. I would be so happy if I had the cream colored one. Maybe I should just get it. So of course, because it's 2023, my automatic response to myself in that situation was, no, you're not doing that. Not for any reason, not for any specific reason, not for any detailed reason, not for any of the reasons I'm about to unpack, but simply because that is the rule of thumb right now. When part of my brain gets the bright idea to buy a thing, the rest of my brain swoops in and it's like, no, we're not doing that. We're starting from no as the baseline. So that was enough for me. That was enough to shake me out of that reverie, that moment of feeling like maybe I should just go like a zombie to my computer and order the sweater. But there are some practical reasons that followed that helped me to not mourn the loss of the sweater that I decided not to buy. One is that one of the reasons that I chose this color instead of choosing cream to begin with is that it has this very high collar and it's touching my face. If I had the cream colored one, it would be getting makeup on it right here. And you know, these 
wool sweaters, they go, like, I had one for a year. I recently washed one that I've had for over a year, and it was the first time I've washed it, right? I almost never wash them because they don't really get smelly. Wool is a really resilient fabric. If I spill a little something on it, or really what happens is Sadie drools on it. My cat. If my cat drools on it, they're water resistant. So, you know, if you spill juice or <laughs> cat drool, it'll just bead and roll off of it rather than soaking in. It's one of the things I love about them. They just don't get super dirty, except for after one's been worn. I mean, I think the one that I recently washed, I had worn it 45 times, maybe more. I washed it on delicate in the washing machine, for those who are wondering. I have a, a washing machine that has a really good, gentle cycle. Cold water, washed it on delicate. I put it flat out to dry, and then I depilled it with a depiller that is working beautifully for me right now, and I'll link that down below. It is absolutely good as new. So that's one of the things that I value about these sweaters, how easy they are to take care of. That wouldn't be true of the cream-colored one with this high neck. It would be getting dirty in here all the time, and that's much more difficult to clean, and that's potentially something that could stain. So I used that information, that practical information, to help talk myself down off the ledge of that momentary sadness, and then I did something that worked even better. I went to my closet and I reorganized my knits, which is something that my sister's always making fun of me for doing because it's a, it's a gif from Schitt's Creek. So I, like David, as I do from time to time, reorganized my knits. And what I did this time was I, so if you've seen any of my videos featuring my closet or that take place in my closet, you'll know that I had all of my knits hanging along with my other tops. So blouses and knits and like long sleeve shirts were all hanging together in color order. So similar colors were grouped together. What I did was I put my pants, which were on another rack underneath my tops, into my closet and I took all of my chunky knits and hung them on that lower rack. So now I have thinner tops like blouses and long sleeve tees all hanging together. And I have all of my really chunky, beefy sweaters all hanging together on a single rack. So for the first time, really, I was able to truly see what a glorious selection of sweaters I have and to see them as their own collection rather than just mixed in with my tops. And when I saw that, the moment I saw that, I was like, whoa, I have not only do I have enough sweaters, but they're wonderful. What could possibly make them better? Like, what was I thinking, thinking that I needed to add another sweater to this collection? What was I thinking, thinking I needed? Why do I keep saying thinking twice in a row? I, I understand why I was doing it. It was just kind of a poor choice. What was I thinking, thinking that I needed a cream colored sweater? It's just like, I have so many. And I'm so glad that I did that. One of the best tricks, I think, for killing the urge to buy more of something that you want to buy because it's a kind of thing that you know you really love and that you already collect is to go reorganize your collection of that thing. To just really not just get a sense of how much you already have, but feel how much satisfaction there is to be gleaned from what you own already. And that is really the fallout of me having reorganized my knits. I've woken up every morning and like looked at that rack of sweaters and been like, wow, I'm so lucky. So the desire for another sweater, specifically another Baba sweater, but I think this will apply to all sweaters going forward from here, is dead and buried. Next up, another clothing related one. And this one kind of got me because there's a practical aspect to it. So the desire for the cream colored Baba sweater was just the desire for something juicy. You know, I wasn't feeling like I had a practical need for that sweater. It was just like, I would love it so much. In this case, there was a practical aspect that made it harder for me to talk myself out of, made it harder for me to turn away from, and meant that I really had to bring out some practical strategies to talk myself down. So I was getting dressed a couple of weeks ago and I went to get a bra out of my drawer. And I mostly wear bralettes, not mostly, exclusively, like soft, stretchy things, not really structured underwire bras. Some of them are structured, but they're just made out of elastic and fabric. So I pulled one of my old favorites, one of my old standards, standbys, just like a, tri a black triangle bralette out of my drawer. And it was just disgusting, like it's in terrible shape. The elastic was all stretched out. And you know that thing that happens to elastic where the little bits of rubber start to pop out. So it sort of has a furry aspect. The jersey knit fabric that makes the cups was truly threadbare. And the straps that go over the shoulders were like all stretched out and saggy and like twisted up together. I pulled it out. And I was just like, I can't believe I'm about to put this on again. It's life is over. And there are a handful of bras in that 
design that I acquired all at the same time a couple of years ago when I was basically replenishing my bra collection, like replacing my bras. And they're all in that state. So I pulled it out. It was dangling. And I was like, it's time for me to replace these bras. Like, this is unacceptable. I shouldn't go on like this. I need to buy new bras. And then I was like, the automatic no. I was like, well, no, we're doing the automatic no. So the answer to that is no, no, it's not. No, you're not. And then I was standing there looking at it. I was like, but this is really a practical matter. Like I do need to replace these. I, it's it, They're all worn out and I wear a bra every day and I should be able to make an exception because this is gross and and it's just the way of the world. You know what I mean? Your bras wear out and you replace them. So that was where I was really trying to talk myself out of the new rule. I was really trying to talk myself out of having no be the answer for that one. So here's what I did. Here's the deal that I made with myself. I was like, okay, Hannah, what you need is to really know how many bras you have and to really assess the situation objectively. Because here's the thing about bras. I wear them and they get dirty, like they get sweaty and smelly, and then I put them into the laundry. And so most of the time, several of them are in the laundry, and I get myself into the situation where I'm looking in my drawer and the only ones left are dirty and ratty or the only ones left are not the ideal silhouette for the thing that I'm hoping to wear today. And I start to feel like I don't have any. I don't have any bras to wear. I don't have any bras. I need more, you know? But it's just because I haven't done my laundry in a while. So I sort of suspected that this was happening. And so last weekend, I did all of my laundry. I did the bright colors. I did the whites. I did the darks. I did all of it. Usually what I'll do is I'll I'll do like one load of laundry and then a couple days later, I'll do another. And so there's all always some dirty, you know? This time I I went through it systematically over a couple of days. I did all of the laundry. So all of my clothes were clean. Hung out everything to dry, dried everything, took it back up to my room, put everything away. And then I took special care with my bras. I got them all out. I looked at them. I folded them all up. I put them all into my drawer. And I was like, Hannah, you really do have enough. You have enough. And I then went so far as to declutter the really nasty ones. I was like, well, let's take out these ones that I was thinking I needed to replace and see what's left. And I was like, whoa, even better, even better. You have enough and they're all really nice. It's funny. There was this thing going on where even though I had more when the gross worn out ones were part of the group, I felt like the situation was less sufficient when the gross worn out ones are part of the group because I looked at it and I was like, wow, a lot of these bras are really at the end of their life. I should probably get some new bras. But all I had to do, and I think this is the key to this one, and this is why I'm including this one specifically in this video. All I had to do was take away the ones that weren't working anymore. And taking them away made what remained feel more sufficient, better, stronger, more like it was enough. And it clarified for me that I didn't need more. So once again, kind of a project of organization, of assessment, of separating the stuff out, of really getting clear and honest with myself about how much I already owned and how well it was already serving me. But a little bit different in this case because I didn't declutter my sweaters at all. All I did was organize them to make myself feel like I had enough. In the case of the bras, I think it was not just the cleaning and the organizing, but also the declutter that totally obliterated my desire to buy more. Okay, next up, you may or may not know that I am really into fountain pens. It's like this this whole thing. There's actually like a little subculture even on YouTube of fountain pen reviewers, like the fountain pen community. I'm like a lurker in the fountain pen community. I have a beautiful, modest collection of fountain pens, some vintage and some new. I have a large collect, not, I mean, compared to people in the fountain pen community. I have an extremely modest edited collection of fountain pen inks. Compared to a normal person, I have a ridiculous number of fountain pen inks. I think I probably have like 10 bottles of fountain pen ink or something. It's just a little thing that's going on on the side in my life, okay? And has been going on for quite some time. And I also use a really nice daily planner with fountain pen friendly paper that has a monthly calendar and like a daily calendar. And I keep it up. It's like kind of like bullet journaling, It's just like my slightly disorganized artistic version of bullet journaling where I write things that happen on certain days. I fill every little block of the monthly calendar so that I can look back over and kind of remember the ups and downs of every month. So I have little stamps that I use that go into the journal. I have not just fountain pens, but some markers. I just have a robust relationship with these sort of like stationary supplies. Everything from really sort of serious fountain pens and inks through to slightly frivolous like markers and water 
washi tape and stamps. Sometime along the way, somewhere along the, the, the days in 2023 so far, I got the bright idea to buy more fountain pen paper. I I don't remember. It, I think I was just playing with my fountain pens one morning, like writing down my dreams as I do. And I pulled out one of my pads of fountain pen paper and I had almost used it up. And I was like, whoa, I'm running low on this paper. I should place an order from Jet Pens, which if you are susceptible to this kind of thing and you don't know about Jet Pens, I'm sorry. Okay, just I'm sorry to be the one to introduce you to them. Just tread carefully, okay? Because there is nothing so seductive as the Jet Pens YouTube, and it's easy to suddenly spend $100 at Jet Pens if you're not keeping yourself in a tight rein. I love to place an order from Jet Pens. I love this company. They just carry a huge array of stationary supplies, letter writing supplies, art supplies, stuff for studying. It's just like every mechanical pencil under the sun, every color of fountain pen ink, every marker and pencil and paint pen. You know what I mean? Like, it's amazing. Every washi tape that you could dream of, journals, little pads of fountain pen paper, note cards, et cetera, et cetera. So I was like, oh, just because I was running low on this one paper, I was like, oh, I should place an order from Jet pens. And all of a sudden, it was like visions of stamps and markers and washi tapes were swirling in my head. And I was like, ooh, I can't wait to place another order from Jet Pens. But you know what happened? The automatic no. I was like, no, we're not doing that. This one is a little bit more straightforward. I immediately recognized that the impulse was baseless. So it wasn't like the thing with the sweaters or the bras where I had to kind of reckon with the reality of my life. I guess I did, but it just all happened much more quickly because I clearly have enough paper and fountain pen inks. There is a color of fountain pen ink that I've wanted for a long time that I don't have. So I think that was part of it. I just thought, oh, I need this paper. And then I can also add my new, my other color of ink that I don't have yet. And then also I can expand my collection of little journal stamps. Well, blah, 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 you know what I mean? But as soon as the automatic no came down, I just woke up from it. And I was like, why would you do that? Like, why would you spend $65 at jet pens when you truly have no need? Truly. Looking around at the paper and the pen and the inks that I already have, it would just be more on top of enough. You know, it would just be extra to do that. And I would just be doing it because of the satisfaction that comes from engaging in that thing, that act for which I have this kind of muscle memory of dopamine and momentary excitement. So I was able to back away from that one pretty quickly. I've saved the hardest one for last, okay? So all of those three that I've mentioned so far are things that I already have, essentially. There's a desire to buy more of something I already love, to replace something that I depend on, that I felt like I had worn out and didn't have enough of, the bras, the paper, to get another color of something that I already loved, right? Classic misstep. But this last one is the hardest because it's something that I came across online that I don't have, that's new and fresh to me, and that I immediately understood as something that I would really like, that would suit me, and that I would get a lot of use out of. Of course, it's clothing. I feel like I didn't talk about this too much at all. I didn't talk about this at all in the video talking about my desire to spend less in 2023 because I was trying to keep that video concise. But clothing is really my Achilles heel. Clothing and accessories and shoes, like, you know, stuff you put on your fashion, basically fashion-related stuff, especially considering that due to the nature of my work, which is mostly in the beauty space, a lot of random makeup and skincare comes my way, either from brands or because I'm reviewing it as part of my channel. I'm often handling makeup that I didn't choose, that I didn't particularly want, but that because I'm reviewing it, I then have the option to use, to keep, and to use. It's like I play with new makeup a lot, and because of that, it doesn't have the same novelty for me. It doesn't have the same thrill as a new outfit, a new sweater, new items of clothing. The reality of my life right now, my relationship with my budget right now is that those are the things, nice garments and outfits and shoes, those are the things that I fantasize about, that I talk myself into buying, that I overspend on. So this last one is that it's classic. I was on Instagram and I got served an ad from this brand I'd never heard of before called The Foxy Kind. It's either Foxy Kind or The Foxy Kind. They make these beautiful looking sets of loungewear with a super oversized long t-shirt and either bike shorts or these long pants that have a flare at the ankle. 
and they're in ribbed, like stretchy ribbed fabric. And I'm just such a sucker for ribbed loungewear. I just love a rib. There's nothing more, there's nothing that I love more than anything ribbed. It's like this brand is out to get me personally because both the set with the shorts, which isn't that practical for me at this time of year here where I am, and the set with the long pants, both of them just fit right into not just my aesthetic desire, like what I feel like I would like to wear, but also my lifestyle. Like that's the kind of thing that I wear that I get good use out of. Like I wear all the time, can work for almost anything I do because, you know, I work from home making YouTube videos. So it's just like, it looks good on Instagram in the outfit of the day. Also looks good on camera. Also feels supremely comfortable. The colors, the fabrics, the silhouettes. I just, I saw this brand and I was like, I need... <laughs> I need some of these sets specifically. And I narrowed it down because I spent time on the site being like, I'm going to make an exception. I was on there. I was like, this is too good. This is too good for me to pass up. I know it's perfect for me. I just know it. So I'm just going to get it. So I was on the site. I was narrowing it down and I narrowed it down to the oversized shirt with the pants with the flare at the ankle in this kind of cinnamon color. There's black as well, and I love black, but I just have so much black clothing, and that cinnamon color mm, really fits with my palette, you know? It's like $100, but I was like, oh, it's totally worth it. It, it makes sense for me. I'm going to wear it all the time. I love it so much. Ah. And, you know, reluctantly in this case, I encountered the automatic no. I was like, this is the exact occasion for which that no is designed. But it was harder because it wasn't like, just think of all the oversized t-shirts and ribbed flared pants you already have. No, because I don't have... Like, I don't have that kind of thing. It was it was fresh and new to me. Didn't work the way it had worked with the sweaters and the bras and the fountain pen inks. It was a little bit more of a battle. This was a situation where I had to just let go of the fantasy and be satisfied with what I already have on a more fundamental level. It's like, my life is already good. My body is already comfortable. My clothes are already sufficient. I already have what I need to put myself together, to feel chic. So I'm leaving the option to look like like this, like have the, this exact silhouette look like the models do or like how I would look in the clothes the models are wearing to look something like that, that I'm leaving that option completely on the table. I'm not taking advantage of that possibility for myself. So I didn't buy it, right? That's the deal this year. The first response is no. But I didn't have a strategy like reorganizing my knits to kill, to like obliterate the desire. I'm over here filming this video telling you I still want it. I still want that set. I want it in both colors and I want a whole bunch of the ones with the bike shorts too. I just still want them. So what I did do, the, the strategy that I took advantage of is the track tried and true wish list and wait. I put it on my online wish list. I use a plugin called Wishlister, but you know, there are a ton of different ways to keep an online wish list. And I'm just going to wait it out. And I know from experience that the chances are that when I revisit my wish list in two or three weeks, I'm going to be surprised that that set is even on there. I'm going to have forgotten about it and I'm not going to want it anymore. If I revisit it in two or three weeks and I do still want it, maybe then I'll go through another round of considering whether or not it's worth it to buy. But I think what it would probably do is just leave it on the wish list and wait another couple of weeks. And I may get to the point where I've lived with that desire for long enough and wearing my own clothes for long enough to actually feel sort of a, a realistic sense of the way that that outfit would actually integrate into my life. So instead of this sudden, bright, kind of baseless fantasy of how perfect it would be, sort of a, having gone through the paces of imagining its integration and imagining wearing it. If I get to that point, I feel really confident that it would integrate well and that it is worth my money and I've waited like a month. I might buy it, but I just know from past experience that the chances are when that month, month anniversary of me discovering this brand rolls around, there will probably be something else that I've discovered that I want that feels like it would be a much better use of my $100. It hasn't been easy so far this year, right? It hasn't been easy. The desires are all crapping up like they always did, but the relief of the automatic no has also 
been palpable. It feels great to be able to just say, nope, the answer is no, and to relieve myself of the agonizing and decision-making and counting of my pennies and double-checking my bank account, you know, to relieve myself of all of the process around deciding to make a purchase in which I would have otherwise been engaged. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really appreciate you for being here. Of course, if you are trying to spend less this year and you have had a similar situation, I'd love to know because I'm nosy. I'd love to know what it is you wanted to buy and then didn't buy. And if you used any strategies like the reorganizing your knit strategy that I use, if you used any of those uh, and they helped you, definitely share it with us down below. Don't forget to subscribe again if uh, you'd like to be subscribed. And don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. I'm just wearing it around the house. But now that I'm sitting here, it's like, it's like I'm being devoured by a big blue worm.